Hiker Jay here. This week I'm talking about the Yeti Rodi 24. Now the Yeti's had the 20 out, Rodi 20 out for a while, but they finally updated it and I think they've done just the right updates to make this the perfect weekender or day trip type of cooler from Yeti. I'm really excited to share it with you. Now what they say is they basically made it 10% lighter, 20% with more capacity and 30% more thermal ability. So we're gonna check all that out. I'll talk about the actual build construction and then how it functions as a cooler itself. If this is the first time to my channel, if you could hit subscribe, that would be awesome. I put out new videos every week on outdoor gear and such. And as always, all the links to the products I'll be talking about will be down below in the description so you can check this out anytime down there. I'm actually gonna use this in my Jeep in my Overland setup because I use my Jeep for like day trip, off-roading, or even weekenders, I think I can stretch out of this. So I'm pretty excited, it fits perfect. The old ones were wider, didn't really fit very well, had that metal bar. Um, so I'm excited to go over all the new changes and the upgrades with this. We will actually start with talking about the build of it and then we'll go into the function, how it functions, how they expect it to function as a, as a day tripper or a, a quick weekend type cooler. So let's get into the build of it. Okay, let's talk about the build before we get into the thermal testing that I did. Now, the build is obviously more narrow and tall and I really like that because this is something that would fit in a back seat or behind a seat, um, but it could sit between two people and it wasn't like the old 20 that was wider. Uh, so I do like that they went taller and of course it was the old 20 and now it's a 24 so it can actually has bigger capacity. I really like that. You, you might be a little nervous about the height, but I I think it's a good thing having it taller. Plus, it makes for a perfect seat. You just pull it out and it's at the right height for somebody to have an extra chair. Now, the rebuild, the updates, let's talk about that. Number one are these latches. They are the best. I hated the old latches where they're rubberizing, you had to pull them and pop them down. Um, these are called one-handed latches. So obviously with one hand, you can go ahead and just unhook the whole thing. Um, and they work great. I hope that they go to these latches on a lot of their other products. So has that rubberized chunk here that gives you that extra pressure to seal it in really tight. So new latches, big plus there. And of course on the inside we'll go. Um, they have the seal on the inside just like normal. And as I said, it's nice and deep. Um, they did build the bottom to fit perfectly a, a four pounder Yeti um, ice block. So you can see how it takes up that bottom perfectly. This is how I plan to use it. Um, as you see in my thermal testing, you'll realize that one of these is not enough. You'll have to add a two pounder here or there, um, but this is the core piece that they say to drop in the bottom to keep that temperature down, but also you can add in pieces. Now, flipping it around, it has the forever hinge, so they haven't changed anything there. Um, awesome hinge, holds up great, just like all the other Yetis that have been out there. And then on the bottom, they've got these rubber stoppers. Um, I like them, they're great, especially for the back of the Jeep on the wood. They're gonna stay put really nicely, or on like a, um, a boat out on, or a kayak or a dock or whatever. They have this little spot right here. I'm not really sure what that hooks into, but I feel like they might have something that it hooks into, um, or why would they have that? The last new update that I wanna talk about is this handle. Okay, so, so many of you are used to that metal handle on a Yeti, and I really hated it because when you try to put it in the back of a car, you still have all that metal hanging down and around that's kind of in the way and it doesn't really pack in tight. With a webbing handle like this, this will just disappear and go flush and I can pack stuff up right against it. Uh, they did put this little plastic grip on here, which you can take off, but I plan to keep it on there because as I was carrying this around fully with ice and everything, you kind of want that extra spot that you can hold on to. I don't think I'd want that webbing like cutting into my hand. So I'm gonna keep that on there. Um, it, it, it works really nice that way, but you can take it off if you wanted to. The last piece about this handle that's super sweet, why I love it so much for my Jeep, is that they have these run-throughs for like one inch webbing. So I plan to put anchors in my Jeep and then a clip right here. So I can just take and clip it in and clip it in on the other side. And then when I need to bring it out, I can just unclip it, pull it out, and somebody can use this as a seat or I can take it into the tent or cabin or whatever that might be. One other thing that I do wanna say before we go on to the temperature testing that I did was this is perfect for an extra seat around camp. It is the perfect height. Look at that, they actually make a pad for it too. I don't think you need the pad, but it's perfect for being an extra seat um, that you can carry along when you're limited on space. Now let's hop out to the footage where I tested this um, with this ice block in it and some food in it. All right, now I've had the cooler set up for 24 hours. 
Um, at noon yesterday, I filled it up. I put one ice block, the four pound ice block in here, just in the bottom. And I put some hot dogs on top of it, some bread and some hot dogs and some water in there so that we can test the temperature of different things and see how it held up. Now I left it in my vehicle all day yesterday through the night. And this morning when it got kind of sunny out in this morning, I put it out here just to simulate sort of in a car and outside during like a 70 degree day. So let's open it up and we're gonna take the temperature of some of these things. Now, why I used hot dogs was because I feel like they have a density to them. So I wanted to see how um, I'm gonna be able to stick the thermometer in it and see if it really held its temperature. But we could also test the water as well. So let's open this hot dog. See what the temperature, the internal temperature is. I think it's important to do a test like this because they do have the thinner walls um, and it's lighter and smaller. So um, I wanna check to see if it'll still keep things really cool. Now this hot dog that was sitting up on top of this bread um, is just at about 60. Um, now that is not up against any ice or anything like that. Let me grab the ones that were right against the ice pad on the bottom. Let's try these ones. Oh, dog wants some of these. All right, let's try these out. Now these were sitting right up against the ice block here in the bottom. Um, and the ice block, you can see, has pretty much melted. Um, it's still really cold though. Uh, so 24 hours, it still is um, really cold. It's just not frozen. I'm wondering if it'll get down to that 40 degrees is what you really wanna keep your meat at, um, below 40 degrees, because that's what they always say for like a refrigerator. Um, you wanna keep it under 40. And that's why I put these up against it and then the hot dog a little further up. So we could tell like what the temperature is right against the ice pack and then what the temperature is further up. So as you can see, I'm just below 50 degrees on these hot dogs 24 hours later, right up against the ice pack. Um, so for 24 hours, I don't think it's gonna keep your meat at a super, super safe temperature. We should be under 43, 40 degrees um, to keep your meat safe. But of course we could have changed the ice out and done something like that. All right, to be fair, what I wanted to do was throw in another ice pack like I normally would use and then see what it gets the temperature up to. Now this is an hour later. I can pull this out and now it's kicking at 40. So I did wanna see just how cold it would make things um, when it comes down to my drinks at 50. My drinks at 50, but the bottom of the cooler is actually at 40. Um, now that I added these other ice blocks because I just wanted to see if I added some kind of in between and help disperse the cold, would it keep it cold? And at the bottom for sure, it is 40 degrees now. Let's see what these guys come in at. My nice little nasty hot dogs. No, I did not give them to the dog yet. She's had to wait. Um, wow, actually it's under 40. Uh, so that's perfect. So I definitely think that one ice block isn't gonna do it. I am gonna get a couple of the two pounders probably just to be able to disperse throughout here. Um, so that way it'll keep it nice and cold. But now my drink is nice and cold and actually things are fogging up because it's hot out here and kind of humid. But um, got our hot dogs down to, we got our hot dogs down to 30 degrees. So, yep. So just having the one in the bottom is not gonna do it for 24 hour period. But I do know that if you keep a couple of frozen ice blocks and I didn't even refreeze that Yeti one down there. I just kept it as it was. And if you add a couple other frozen blocks, um, it's gonna keep it plenty cold. So those thermal tests were really good for me. Basically what it told me was that a little, a four pounder alone won't do it for 24 hours. It will do it for a quick day trip, but I wanna add a couple more ice blocks in there just to make it right as I did in my second test, we'll keep it cold. And also the second thing is to, is to update your ice each day as well to keep it cold in there too. So um, those were qu two quick lessons that I learned from that one. As I said, if you want to get one of these or check it out yourself, links down in the description, you can check it out there. Till next time, just remember, life's a hike, so hike happy.